Hello and welcome to today's very exciting episode as I'm finally going to go through and explain every single ink that I own and every ink that's out there so you can know what ink will work best for your artistic needs. What's up guys, I'm Jay Rod of Foul Brawl Production, and as I say in the beginning of this video, I'm going to go through every ink that I know exists slash have and explain what the differences are between them so that you know what you need for your artistic needs. I've been exploring the artistic medium of ink. It is my favorite medium to work in. And while we do other stuff like alcohol markers, watercolor, a little bit of gouache, a little bit of acrylics here and there, for the most part, this is pretty much an inking channel. So I thought it'd be really cool to go through and actually explain the difference of all the different types of inks that are out there, both in my collection and just kind of inks that are out there that you can purchase and just kind of explain what their strings are and how they work. I do want to give a quick disclaimer, and that is I am not a licensed ink expert. I don't think there is such a thing. However, in my circle of friends, work, and the artists that I hang around, I am the ink expert. I'm the one that everyone comes to when they have questions on inks. I'm the one that can answer almost any question on ink, and I know a lot about inks. Also, I know I said this is every ink explained. I might miss one or two inks that I'm just not aware of, or I don't have in my collection, or it's just something that slipped my mind. So I do apologize. I may do a follow-up video if you guys want to. But with that said, let's go ahead and dive into category number one. The first category we're going to go over are all the tools that you can use because there's quite a few and this isn't even all of them. Now the first tools that come to mind are your dip pen and your quill nib. Both of these are good for line art with replaceable nibs. The difference is the dip pen takes a larger nib while the quill nib takes a smaller nib. However, manga pens are really popular because they take both sizes and are compatible with both eastern and western nibs, something that American dip pens and quill nibs Art. So these are going to be one of the main tools that you use the most for line art and different effects and techniques. There's also glass burn variations, which do tend to perform better with non-waterproof or calligraphy inks and a bamboo version. That's right, a bamboo dip pen. Cool and weird. And I haven't even gotten the chance to use these yet, but they're wild. Also the classic fountain pen, which is a really good tool for writing, though I personally never use them for art. The main reason is because you have to use special formulated ink that says calligraphy ink because any other ink will clog these things up. And almost all calligraphy ink ink isn't waterproof. But this is a classic tool and this is actually my favorite fountain pen. I absolutely love how sleek and nice it looks. The second tool that comes to mind are brushes. These are watercolor brushes and that's what you want to use. Something that can hold on to a lot of liquid but these water brushes also work well. You could fill the body with ink or ink and water for ink washes and while there is a debate of synthetic versus natural brushes, I tend to prefer synthetic. They're cheaper, easier to clean, and will last just as long though they don't hold as much ink. However, the trade-offs in my opinion outweigh them. While natural brushes are really Really good they are super expensive and you're really only getting something that's going to dip less so my opinion is that it go worth it the next one are actually erasers ink is such a permanent medium you tend to not think of that but now we have erasers that can work for ink this one has more of a sandpaper like texture but it works really well though it can damage your paper and lastly the tool that very few people think of with inking is this this is an airbrush that's right you can use ink in an airbrush in fact most acrylic inks are specifically formulated to work in an airbrush and it's awesome to do. Super fun. This is a Badger airbrush my dad bought in the 90s before I was born and I've been fixing up and this thing is super, super fun. But that's all the tools. Let's go ahead and dive into our first category of inks. That being indie ink. And while I don't want to say this is pretty much the standard for ink, it's the one we all think of for good reason. It's super affordable, easy to find. I mean, Michael's Hobby Lobby and my job at Blake sell them in tons of different styles and options. And there's a lot of variety in indie ink. Now this one's my personal favorite. This is the Windsor Newton Black Indie Ink. And something to keep in mind with indie ink is that it's going to give you a 100% black depending on the brand. It will dry glossy and satin depending on the brand. It will be waterproof but not alcohol marker proof and will work in all the tools I mentioned excluding a fountain pen. Now that's going to be for every ink on this list unless I specifically say otherwise. And as mentioned there's a lot of options when it comes to indie ink. This one is water based while PBO is pigment based making it thicker. A lot of hobbyists tend to like this one but traditional illustrators like myself prefer a water based one just because it has a higher flow to it. This one can be really annoying to use in a dip pen, but you can get some really cool finishes with it, and it pretty much sticks to almost any surface, making it a little more versatile depending on the application you need. I did say that India ink is going to be waterproof but not alcohol market proof, and that's true. Some companies do make a non-waterproof version. This is really cool for some backgrounds and some cool techniques, and Higgins takes it a step further by specifically having less pigment than their other competitors. This is great for complex ink washes and pretty much serves as a liquid watercolor, and since they have a waterproof and non-waterproof version, 
version pretty much is liquid watercolor. And something like Speedball adds a little twist to it by having enamel built into their ink. So not only is it pretty black giving you a really solid look, but it will stick to any surface you apply it to. I've actually seen people use this to dye wood solid black for furniture making. And even though we think of black and white art when it comes to inking, they do come in a variety of colors. I happen to own all 26 Windsor Newton colored inks, but Dr. PH Martin makes a ton of colors and so does Higgins. So there's a lot of variety when it comes to coloring. Pretty much you can make an entire piece of artwork fully colored only using inks and that's pretty impressive. But that's it for the indie inks. So we're going to go to the next category. The second type of ink you probably thought of and honestly probably the most common ink made is calligraphy ink. This is specifically made for fountain pens as fountain pens will not work with ink that is waterproof. Meaning that all calligraphy ink is not waterproof. Even if it says it is, it's lying. It's going to be more water resistant. And that's just because of the nature of the tool that you primarily use with this ink. And something to keep in mind is that these inks are incredibly liquidy to the point where it's more common for a black calligraphy ink to have a purple or gray tint to it than be 100% black, meaning it's really difficult to get those solid tones, but they come in a variety of colors. You can make really cool art with them. And while it's easy for me to rag on these because I prefer something that's waterproof for my mixed media use and my comic illustrations, this is still a fun ink and it's super affordable. This is my personal favorite calligraphy ink that I use in my fountain pen. And while again, it is easy for me to rag on them, I really like this pen, the really nice sleek fountain pen. Now due to the permanency of ink, when you make a mistake, it's really difficult to fix it, but there are ways to do it. And white ink is one of them, which I'm going to make its own little category, despite technically being a subcategory of India ink and also being, well, jelly ink. Now jelly ink is pretty much your gel point pen that you use every day to take notes in school. I'm not going to talk about that ink, excluding this one here being the Sugar White Gel Pen, which is a really good way to add small ears of white back into a piece. And the Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink is my absolute favorite white ink. I can't use it in a dip pen because it's too thick, but this stuff layers over everything and creates a 100% solid white that I could put over any piece, whether it be acrylics, watercolor, gouache, and especially ink. And I do also want to highlight the Dr. Pete Martin's Bombay White Ink. While I wouldn't recommend using this ink with a brush, I would definitely recommend it with a dip pen as it actually works and gives you a pretty good white that you could put over other mediums. But if you had to pick between the two, the Bleed Proof White Ink is my absolute favorite and that's my go-to white ink. It works great with every brush I've used, though please clean your brushes thoroughly after using it. It is a powerful, thick ink. Next are acrylic inks, which have a variety of applications. For one, they're really good to use with an airbrush, and anything that says it's compatible with acrylics will work with this as their acrylic base. So all your gels, all your paste, gessos, mediums, they'll all work with this. They're also super opaque, so you can layer them on top of each other like normal acrylics, but you can also use them on other mediums really well too. They're not alcohol marker proof, but that's understandable as alcohols and acrylics repel, and I wouldn't say they're waterproof in all honesty, as in my experience, while they don't bleed, they definitely do run the risk of chipping, which is a big hazard to use with these. And another fun thing about acrylic inks, they come in a bunch of different colors. Here's just a few of the FW ones I have, but I also have some by Amsterdam and Liquitex. Now acrylic inks aren't the most mixed media friendly as I mentioned, but they're a great tool to have for top coats for inkers and just giving you more options as an acrylic painter. They're really good for pendulum painting and paint pouring, but for me personally, I often use this red ink for echolocation effects since it's super opaque and I can layer them on top of black paper or I can just layer them on top of black ink. Also worth mentioning, Golden makes their own version called an acrylic high flow. Now it's not labeled or advertised as an acrylic ink because it's really not. It's much thicker than even the FW acrylic inks, which are a little thicker than most India inks, but you could still use them in your dip pen with varying results. And these are just really good tools to have, especially for miniature painters as they work in an airbrush. So overall, while acrylic inks may seem a little limiting, they have very great uses. They're very versatile and very interesting, unique ways. And they're a really fun tool to have in your tool belt. Now this next thing I'm going to talk about is one we've all taken for granted. It's been on the rise for the last 15 to 20 years in popularity, but it's one that I really like and have grown a new appreciation for, and that's dye base inks. You're not going to really find them in inkwells, but instead tools like these, pencil pocket brush pen and your humble micron. What's really cool about dye base ink is there's two variations, like most inks, a waterproof version and a non-waterproof version. Well, the non-waterproof version is your standard water solvent ink. The non-waterproof version is really interesting as it's also alcohol marker proof, being the first ink on this list to have that distinction. But what really is cool about dye base inks is that when you get to a high enough quality, they are considered archival inks. In fact, Micron is considered an archival ink, making it the preferred pen of the House of Congress. An archival ink is just a really high quality dye base ink that isn't just water and alcohol marker proof, but is also weatherproof, fade proof, yellowing proof, and just lasts an incredibly long time. And that's really cool to learn. It really makes me appreciate Micron's far more. The Pentel brush pen is not archival ink, but it's still really high quality dye base ink that I use with a lot of my illustrations in my sketchbook and is the closest experience to a brush dipping ink you can get on the go. I absolutely love 
love these things. A dye based ink can come in different colors and is super versatile and is great for mixed media use. I really appreciate this ink a lot more now that I've done more research into it. As a side note, I actually thought the Copic fine liners were dye based, but instead they're pigment based, which is really interesting as these are alcohol marker proof and so they must be a special variation of pigment inks that don't have the issue that normal ones do. So just wanted to throw that in there. Next is one of the most interesting inks on this list, that being alcohol inks, which you're predominantly going to see in marker form, but you can get in marker refills and in just straight up ink wells. Now I could spend an entire video just talking about alcohol ink and I have in the past, but everything you need to know going forward will be applicable to it in an ink well or in a marker. Now alcohol ink has a lot of very unique properties to it. For one, they're reactivatable, they're transparent, and they're incredibly mixed media friendly. They also come in pretty much every color that's under the sun. For example, I have 157 different colored Copics and that's not even close to half of the colors they have. I don't even think that's a third of the colors they have. Now with the inks being transparent and reactivatable, you could do amazing blends and layer the colors in very unique ways. Like watercolors, you do have to work light to dark, but what you can do with them is insane. You could do realism, you could do cartooning, you could do comics, you could do cell shading. There is so much you can do with alcohol markers. And as I mentioned before, they work great with other mediums. If you use them with watercolor, you can take advantage of transparency and even reactivate slight parts of the watercolor. You can also use them with acrylics and have them repel each other in really cool and unique ways. You can also melt wax-based color pencils. So you could create a smoother blend and even just straight up blend the color pencils only using a colorless blender. Now, most of the time, you're pretty much gonna be using alcohol ink in a marker form, but you can use it in an inkwell. A lot of people like to drip these onto paper for different cool random effects, for different techniques, for different backgrounds. And Copic has a airbrush that I've been experimenting with and it's really cool in going in and creating these really great backgrounds and blends. Alcohol ink is probably the most versatile ink out there, but it does have problems. For one, like I said, it is transparent, even the black one. So you have to pair it with another type of ink if you want something that's solid. And since it blends, that does mean that if you want to have something not blend, it's going to be a lot more difficult. But they're incredibly fun to use. They're super versatile. I could spend literally another video talking about all the things you can do with alcohol ink. In fact, I may do that in the future. Let me know if you guys want to see that. But that's everything for the alcohol marker inks that I have time to talk about in this video. Going from one ink that's extremely versatile to an ink that's very limiting, we're going to talk about technical ink. Technical ink is really weird because it's technically another subversion of India ink. It's really not. They're going to be waterproof, but they're very liquid ink specifically formally to work in technical pens, which are essentially fine liners that are reusable. A lot of mechanics, a lot of engineers, and a lot of smart people like to use these pens. And they're really cool, they're really nice, but they can be difficult to clean, and the ink itself is pretty temperamental. I'm just bringing this up because if I didn't, I know someone would complain about it. Up next is the only ink that I don't have an inkwell for, and that's because I gave mine away, and that is walnut ink. Walnut ink is made with, well, walnuts, I mean, I don't know what you guys expected, and it's one of those weird inks where I generally don't know why it exists. Like, every other ink that I've talked about and will talk about in this video, I understand why it exists and has a legitimate practical application. But this ink, I don't understand. It's just made with walnuts. It's brown. In fact, it only comes in that brown sepia color. It's transparent. It's not waterproof. It's not alcohol marker proof. It layers pretty well, and it works in all the tools I've mentioned in this video, except for a fountain pen. But I generally don't understand why it exists. If there is a specific application that I'm missing, I would love to hear from you guys, because outside of it just being made from walnuts, and that's its gimmick, I really don't get why it exists. Next are watercolor inks. Watercolor inks are really fun and great to use because sometimes you want to do really cool complex watercolor techniques but you don't want to use tubes or half pans you just want to get some liquid watercolor and that's where these come in. Now there's two different versions out there that I really recommend that being the Dr. P8 Martins Hydrus and the Dr. P8 Martins Radiant. The difference is that the Hydrus is your standard watercolor ink. It's going to be normal colors while the Radiant watercolor are super saturated colors borderline neon in some cases. These are really cool because you can put them down you can mix them easily and when they're dry add some water to reactivate them. Really fun to use and they are a lot of really cool almost niche applications I want to say but they're really fun ink to play with especially if you love watercolor. Something I do want you guys to keep in mind watercolor and inks are basically sister mediums they go hand in hand. The next ink I want to talk about definitely falls more on the gimmick side of it but I really like it and that is UV slash invisible ink. UV inks have the very unique property of glowing like crazy under a black light. They can be invisible while on paper or have a color that will then glow and be altered by the black light. I really like to use them to spice up my artwork and add cool layers and hidden messages or just doing cool effects with my artwork. They are actually surprisingly mixed media friendly and they have an almost identical consistency to alcohol markers. In fact, I actually have a few Copics that are fluorescent. They are one color on the page and 
and glow like crazy under a black light. Like I said, it definitely is more of a gimmick, but I really like invisible and UV inks, and I think you guys should really try it out and use more in your artwork. You'll be surprised with the results you get. Next is definitely one of the most unique and interesting types of inks out there, that being Japanese ink sticks. Ink sticks have the unique property of coming with a grindstone that you fill with water, and then rub and grind the stick of ink into the water to create the ink that you paint with. These can be waterproof, non-waterproof, alcohol marker proof, and are really unique because these are really good for you controlling the consistency of the ink you have. Depending on how much of the pigment you mix with the water or how much you grind with it, you can get something that's incredibly thick or something that's incredibly thin, something that's more gray than black. It's a really unique way to create artwork that I've only used once, but stay tuned, I will be making a video exploring this very unique and very cool medium. And last but not least, my second favorite ink of all time and my go-to for mixed media, Sumi ink. Now Sumi ink comes in two different styles, a waterproof and a non-waterproof version. We're gonna focus on the waterproof version. The waterproof version has a resin base to it, which means it's gonna dry completely matte, unlike India ink. It's also a little thicker than India ink, so if you're not used to that, it can be a little off-putting, but it's a quick adjustment to make. It's also 100% water and alcohol marker proof, which is great for mixed media use, and why it's my go-to. Now this is the Zix Cartoonist Sumi ink, which is my favorite one, though other brands are really good to use. For example, these guys right here, I have used their non-waterproof version, and it works really well, I just prefer Zix because it has a richer black. Also, it being matte and alcohol mark proof is why it's really popular with a lot of Mangeku. The non-waterproof version is really good if you want to have those non-waterproof techniques, if you want to incorporate some different styles and very specific applications. But in all honesty, save yourself the trouble and just get the waterproof version. It is amazing and the fact that it works with alcohol markers, a point that I have been stressing throughout this video, is why I saved it for last. It is one of the best inks out there, but not the easiest to get your hands on. I've never seen it available at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, though I have seen it at Blick and you can get it on Amazon with really affordable price ranges. And that is my entire collection of ink and the end of the video of me talking about every type of ink that I have and that's out there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. It was a lot of fun to put together. It was a little stressful for me to actually get all my crazy artistic thoughts out there and organized for you guys, but I hope this is a really good resource for you and encourage you guys to get into the art of inking. It is my favorite art medium of all time. I absolutely love it. If I had to choose just one medium for the rest of my life, it would be ink because of how versatile it is. And hopefully this video showed you just how truly amazing and versatile that medium is. If you guys like the video, leave a like, subscribe for more art and animation based content. And remember, I'm Jay Rod of Balbrawl Productions. I draw the power in my own soul. Take care.